Hi guys and welcome to part one of my two-part series on installing a trailer hitch on our 2015 Buick Encore. Earlier we had purchased two e-bikes and subsequently a dual bike rack. Up until now we've had to attach the rack to our truck with its two-inch receiver but traveling long distances to ride soon proved expensive due to the gas required. We'd like to change that and add a trailer hitch to the peanut which is my affectionate name for my wife's small Buick because of the fuel savings. Part one of this series covers the trailer hitch, unboxing, and some of the unnerving issues I'm gonna face, while part two covers the actual install itself. So stick around and let's get after it. I decided to pick up this muffler hanger removal tool for a nominal charge. This should help quite a bit. We'll put it to the test in part two. As we begin to examine our mounting points, let's observe a couple of landmarks. This is the muffler brace and our two trailer hitch mounting points. Now according to the instructions, the access hole for the passenger side rail is circled here. There's just one problem. About two-fifths of the hole is covered by the brake line. Take a look. In addition, there are objects not identified, like this hole that is plugged inside. This shot shows that same plug at a different angle. And this appears to be yet another access hole, but much further forward. On the driver's side, there's a similar landscape. The hitch only has one bolt that needs mounting at this circled location. And here's that pesky plugged hole again, along with the suggested access hole with brake line, and another access hole much further away. 
Well, I think this calls for a build-up of a cardboard model of the rail on the passenger side. I used my digital calipers and measured each hole size and the distance between. You can see how close the measurements are here. In addition, I built a simulated brake line and even a hole with a plug. The idea is to practice the act of feeding in the spacer, then the carriage bolt upside down and dragging it all the way backwards and out through the rear mounting hole. Of course, this practice is made easier by the fact that my model has a cutaway wall and we can actually see what's going on inside the rail. In actuality, we'll be performing this part blindly. In addition, we have no idea what obstacles are inside the rail from point A to point B. Add to that fact, the instructions want us to use the access hole covered by the brake line. If I were to use this access hole instead of the one blocked by the brake line, this would be the manner in which I would perform the install on the front mounting hole. There's just a couple of issues with using this access hole. Number one, I don't know how far up inside the rail this plug goes, and it might block me. And two, I'd have to rig a way to make the pull wire longer to reach the rear mounting hole. This is a perfect application to use my bore scope for some investigative work. If you recall, I performed a review on this product not long ago. Let's find out if I have anything to worry about inside this rail. This shot reveals that the plug I was concerned with does not block the rail all the way from top to bottom. The bore scope reveals lots of space above the plug. In addition, the rail tunnel appears clear even though there's a couple of extraneous bolt heads protruding. These sharp edged corners may be cause for concern as far as trapping the pull wire. Although there are obstacles, my scope has not revealed any reason not to proceed. So I hope you'll join me for part two and let's see if my practice paid off.